Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming back to the podcast. Today's special returning guest is uh, Mr. Marcus Maloney, who is an Irish dance teacher, judge, and I would call him the director of directors of dancing and performance at Bush Gardens, the Celtic Fire Show. Uh, Marcus, good to have you back on. Thank you, Richard. Good did to I get you. those accolades right or did I get it? <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> You're a man of many you hats. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So, Marcus, yeah, I wanted to have you come on and, and talk about the, uh, you know, you're looking for dancers. Talk about the production and also what you're looking for for the, the Bush Gardens uh, Celtic Fire Show that's in Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah. So I suppose just to date back a little bit, the show um, has been running since 2010. And just to give maybe a brief history of, of what happens at Bush Gardens, um, it's a European themed theme park. So there are different countries represented from Europe and there's France and Italy and the UK. And obviously we have a beautiful Ireland in Williamsburg, Virginia. And the highlighter, the centerpiece of the Ireland section of the park is this Abbey Stone Theatre, which is home to the Celtic Fire Show. So it's like a 900 or 1000 seater um indoor fully air conditioned theater because the humidity gets a bit rough in Virginia in the summers. So it's a nice little break for guests in the park to go in during the summer. So the show is based in the Abbey Stone and it's called Celtic Fire and it opened in 2010. So we're running for almost 15 years now. And I suppose over the years, the show kind of has gone from strength to strength and the reason I guess it's still running, we've won a good lot of theme park awards and entertainment awards, and the show is extremely popular. We get a lot of um amazing feedback um from guests and other performers. Um, and I suppose with the success of the show, we kind of took the old traditional show format of River Dance, Lord of the Dance, which was the kind of show review style, you know, a dance, a song. Um, music whereas this is much more of a musical feel okay and it's almost like a th- it's a 30 minute show a 30 minute broadway musical where it's singing dancing music but it's all immersed together so the cast full cast are on stage for pretty much the entire show because if you're not dancing you're still involved in some kind of acting scene on stage okay hmm so I guess the background to the, to the actual show, it's set in a bar scene. So, you you know, the kind of bar scene is quite, quite loose to an extent, as in we wanted guests to really feel, to make it feel very real, like it was Ireland. And it was uh, this story that's happening in an Irish bar. And the story, it's it's an Irish wedding reception and the, the male and female leads are the bride and groom. And um, it, it's the story of the coming together uh, of um, family and friends and celebration and then the big party that happens after it. All in 30 minutes. Oh, that, that's a pretty compressed show. Now, what was your original involvement with it? How did you get involved with the production? So when I was a, a performer <laughs> prior to this, I actually performed at Bush Gardens myself. Okay. Uh, when, oh God, what age was I? 19, 20, 21 like early 20s and then I was I went off and toured with Riverdance and then I came back um near the end of my Riverdance career and kind of was offered this position here hmm all right so when you walk in there day one if I'm sure you remember day one walking there and uh, in there not as a dancer and performer but as someone that's going to be helping produce and direct this show what was yeah. that like for you was that the first your first foray into show production or had you done a little bit before um, we have like I've been involved in like uh, the kind of putting together a production of like a, a smaller corporate show here in Dublin, hmm. but nothing to that extent. Right. Uh, obviously, I'd had the experience of touring and shows and Irish dancing and choreography, but uh, it was a definitely an incredible eye opening experience. Like we worked with Broadway designers um, our lighting designer was Ken Billington, who won a Tony Award for Chicago. Okay. So it was incredible to meet some other amazing designers, set designers, lighting designers, and to kind of work with them and see how it all operates. Hmm. Okay. So when you walked in there day one, did you did you have to change anything from how it was that was currently uh, yeah. operating? Yeah, it was a com- completely brand new show. So oh. it was uh, 
it was completely all brand new, new set, new dancers, new everything. So it was like a fresh, fresh start. And it opened in 2010. So how it all began, you know, we, we it, the show opened in 2010, but we were planning it for a full year in advance. Hmm. Um, true. I, I went there for a couple of meetings uh, on the phone and kind of with the collaboration of the entertainment team there at Bush Gardens, like they have a full entertainment production team uh, of casting directors, creative directors, set, scene, music. So it's very much a collaboration of everybody coming together. And obviously I brought that, the Irish dance uh, side to it so mm-hmm. you know we would sit down to to creative meetings and there could be eight nine ten people there okay and so talk about those early days where you're you're setting up the, the dancing part are you working up those routines yourself or did you have a team that you were working with uh no initially i did it all myself no yeah. now at the time <laughs> i was actually on tour in, in river dance and i was on the north american tour and i remember for our warm-ups i would like grab some of the dancers like hey I need to see if this works and I teach them something yeah. like, okay, does this work? So I kind of used them as the guinea pigs before <laughs> we got to Williamsburg for rehearsals. But I guess the first thing was like, we came up with the show concept and the story and then the music uh, designer and producer, it was Colm O'Fellu who had been involved in other Irish dance shows before. And so he kind of got the whole, show Irish dance show world okay Um, I think once you get the music into your head the choreography thing kind of flows because very hard you know we had an idea of what the show was but until Mm -hmm. we actually got the music it was hard to um it's in what I mean it's it's easier Mm -hmm. to choreograph and you can you can see the piece on stage you're like okay that music fits for this and that and the musicality of different pieces okay so did you have um I guess carte blanche privilege to to make up the steps as you see fit or were there someone saying hey we want this many treble reels and this many slip jigs yeah. and all that oh it was completely free reign <laughs> oh awesome best way so <laughs> yeah no uh, they they uh, they get put a lot of trust to me i guess but it was very much we kind of came up with a show flow that worked because you know you can't have a high energy show on this level for a full 30 minutes you need the audience on a journey and you need that you need that kind of nice slow slip jig into a nice you know audience participation build to a big finale so it was about getting the show flow right that basically by the end of the 30 minutes they want to come back and watch the next show okay so is it they they leave going oh my god i want to watch that again Okay. Okay. So is it the same 30 minute show that repeats or is there like a, a, a part two that's the next day or later on that night? The exact, exact same okay. show. Okay. All right. And talk about some of the changes to the show. I know if it's like any other Irish dancing choreography, whether it's competitive or performance, eventually you get new ideas and you see what works and doesn't work. Talk about some of those, uh, the evolution of the show over the years. Well, yeah, absolutely. I guess I, I it's just recently enough because they're preparing for next year and mm. you know for ideas for changes and things. And I watched the video of the original show from 2010 and I was like, oh my wow, how different it was. Just with the evolution of dance, choreography has changed too. Sure. It's definitely a lot more difficult, I would say. Right. But we we've kind of modernized it. Um to kind of more what we're doing in contemporary Irish dancing mm-hmm. now at competitions or in shows. And I feel the standard of dancers has got to a really, really high caliber. And the dancers now, these days, they're able for a lot harder material, choreography. But the balance of that, it's yeah, it's great to do that. But the, but the balance is, you know, it's very high impact and we're doing this show three to four times a day. So we just have to be very careful, you know, maintaining everyone's health and safety and injuries. And we don't want to uh, burn everybody out. So it's coming up with something that's doable for a six month run three, four times a day. So it's getting the balance of both of those. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that, Marcus. You, you talked about how choreography has changed. It's certainly those of us who've been in Irish dancing for any length of time, you've seen the metamorphosis of choreography. Now, obviously things that you may do in a competition to, to one up your competitor, uh, 
is not necessarily what you you can get away with doing for 30 minutes in a in a show so how do you find the balance of really catchy intricate things keeping up with the times challenging your dancers but also the typical chorus line stuff that really ropes people in because most as we all know if you're not in the irish dance world um you don't know if you're the audience you know john q audience you, you don't know that oh wow that's a triple click or you know whatever it is and wow that's so cool we would understand the difficulty but they wouldn't how do you keep the choreography relevant yeah that's actually so true and sometimes i find we have a number, a tap number, and there's, you know, an Irish trade-off at American Taps, and we're always saying, oh, the three ingredients, you know, you need a solid piece of rhythm, you need a comedy moment, something to uh, get the audience in. But what's incredible to me is to the general audience, seeing a line of 10, 12 dancers just doing the exact same thing, yep. Yep. exact same time, and that's the success of Riverdance. All it over. works. <laughs> <laughs> and treble, 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 cut, treble. And it's just that line of everyone doing the same. And it's the very same for us. Uh, I would say most of the audience reaction is like the group numbers, everyone all together, lines, sharpness. Right. And, you know, simple. Like, I, I feel like for those kind of big group numbers, the choreography doesn't need to be particularly difficult mm -hmm. because what's the impressive thing is the line of dancers yeah the sharpness the precision yeah so <laughs> for oh, the go ahead. would do much more kind of intricate right right okay so talking about the, the dancers that make up these routines now i know some of the who's who that we'd be familiar with in the irish dance world have either started their career in in a, a bush gardens production or maybe they visited it while they were with other shows uh or maybe they bookended the end of their career with it i've seen people different phases going through that production uh, talk about who who is the ideal fit for that production Okay, interesting. And as you said, it's it's interesting because we have had all different mm -hmm. uh, different dancers from different backgrounds. Some starting out their career, some finishing their career, some in between tours. So it's been interesting. But obviously, for me, I love to get a young dancer in who's starting their career because it's lovely to see their progression right. from how they start to, you know, and sometimes they move on to some other amazing shows. We've had dancers who've gone on to be leads in river dance lord of the dance um so it's uh it's great to see that but it's also lovely it's kind of endearing to see people kind of on the other side who've been at those shows and they've come to this because you know what they love about it too it's it's is that kind of broadway musical theater feel but also what people love about uh williamsburg is they are, they get to perform and do a show but they get to live in the same place right they're there for six months and they make friends and a family or not family, but, you know, it, they're, they're like family backstage. Right. And Williamsburg is a really, really cute town. I don't know if and yeah, people are that familiar with it, but Colonial Williamsburg was one of the original capitals. That There's a huge history element there. And it's a very quaint, cute little town about mm. where I say to Washington, D.C. So there's a lot, of, a lot going on there. And I know from when I was younger there, and I know a lot of the performers still say this. I actually just got an email recently from a performer this year. And she's like, Marcus, I had the most amazing summer. Um, now I get it. I get why everybody loves Bush Gardens. I get why. <laughs> and it's funny because most people who spend a summer or a year there, or, you know, a couple of a couple of seasons, they all have the same thing. It's like a second home. So that's great to mm -hmm. hear and see, too. OK, and. Ability wise, what, what are you looking for when someone applies, when they send in their resume or, or their CV or video or something like that? And we'll get into the specifics of how they need to apply in just a minute. But, you know, when you get this interest coming in and you start parsing through all of it, who starts sticking out is, OK, let's contact this person. I think this person has what we need. Just to give people the background, there's a, an audition scoring system. Sure. Um, and it's based, obviously, it's on technique, execution, strength. So, you know, basic Irish dance technique, you know, crossing, turning it, you know, like not to say that we're judging it like fish because we're absolutely mm -hmm. not. But at the same time, you know, you have to have a, a basic criteria for technique. Right. And because we're performing three to four times a day, stamina is very important. But ultimately, performance quality, stage presence 
Um, this particular show, it's very immersive. It's not just being a dancer on the stage. There's a lot of acting opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's singing opportunities. So it's get, looking for a performer that's not afraid to get out of their comfort zone. And I suppose the earlier days of rehearsals, you know, we are trained mostly as just Irish dancers. Right. And what we're looking for is someone or for performers who are not afraid to try other things. So it's wonderful over time to see them progress and develop confidence in acting and singing. And, you know, they're all coached to do that too, obviously. But it's just uh, we're looking for a performer who just has that kind of extra edge and that they're not just a good dancer. Mm. And sometimes we get, I feel as dancers and shows, we get fixated on Irish dance competition results and different things. And to me, you know, that's not really important. It's what you bring on stage. And I just know from experience, I've seen dancers on both sides. I've seen it in Riverdance too. Dancers who went on to be leads in Riverdance or our show, and they might not have had the most amazing competitive career. But yeah. again, versa, the same thing. We've had world champions in shows. And just because they were world champions, sometimes there's that assumption, oh, they're going to be amazing in the show. Right. They might be amazing dancers, but maybe they're not as good at performing. So there's a lot of various different things. But I would just say the big thing is, you know, performance quality and not being afraid to um, immerse themselves in these new qualities. Okay. Like, you'll train the dancing and all of that. But one thing, I suppose, what a lot of the dancers probably will say about rehearsals with me of here is, is like, I am a stickler if we're in the show for sharp sharpness. Mm -hmm. So it's hands or uh, turns. And so I think uh, that has definitely been a bit of my <laughs> legacy with some of the dancers. So sharpness, I'm building up to that. Uh, you know, some people honestly don't realize sometimes you might give them a note. They genuinely don't understand what you're talking about until maybe they see it in a video like oh now we know what you're talking about right it's 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 interesting because we've i've dealt over the last 15 years with all different types of scenarios mm -hmm. but the one thing i will say and thankfully every single year we've had just the strongest of casts uh who've worked so so hard um and honestly when we go to do uh, auditions like 75 80 percent of our casts are re-auditioning to come back all the time because that's how much people love it so that's it's really great okay to, to have that interest too absolutely so what about other skills and personality traits who what's the ideal personality uh for someone that's wanting to enter the show because soft skills you know people skills are a big part i would imagine being able to get along and take instruction talk about that so especially for the people uh, Marcus, who have maybe never done a show and they want to do one for the first time and you're you're their first uh, attempt at doing a show. They may not be familiar with how things work behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. Very valid point. And uh, we have a we have a, a on site dance captain, Irish dance captain who does the day to day running of the show, be it rotations. And that is their to go to person uh, regarding anything Irish dance related. So that would be the person giving the daily notes on top of the stage manager. But I guess you, you you mentioned a point there that I thought was very important. People skills, especially when you're there for a long period of time, six months, it's very important to be able to get on with people. It's a small area backstage. Right. Um, and, you know, you're on top of people and, you know, you're around people all day long, no, but no different to any job people get on your nerves so it's important to be and you know one thing I've, I've learned over the last number of years too being able to take constructive crit criticism you know some people take it very personally and it's like it's not personal at all and I I always like to reiterate that at the very first rehearsal is like if you get a note it's no reflection on you as a person it's to make you a better performer and some people just can take those kind of things very personally. Mm. It's it's not something that's aimed at them directly. Right. It's just being able to take a note. And it's a very important skill to be able to take a note or a correction. Like, okay, yeah, you know what, I'll go fix that. 
Mm. or I'll make that better or you know learning from your peers we do we do a lineup every every morning or afternoon of the rotations for that day but I think it's very important to learn from your peers and you know who's in that position oh they're really good or you know you're learning from the people around you all the time Mm -hmm. okay and so a a day in the life again kind of feeding off this idea for the, the person maybe coming into the first time and they're thinking I love Irish dancing this. I've heard good, good things about the show. It's a professional crew, good location. All that stuff is great. But what might I experience going in day one? So day one, well, firstly, the start of the season is (laughs) a pretty intense three week rehearsal period. Okay. So it's a, it's a great length of time to develop, you know, like I've done other shows where it's been like, Ooh, three days you're on. Whereas we do a full, full, rehearsal period at the start of every season and what I do love about that too it kind of conditions people up to show pace by the time you open but anyway uh, a normal run of the mill day say if it was a normal day and th- this particular day there might be a show three five and seven they'll come in at one they'll do the warm-up on stage the full cast the singers dancers we have a cast of six singers uh, three musicians two American tappers 12 Irish dancers Um, So there's a big team and they all warm up together. And then each of the different, uh, um, the different sections. So the singers will go off and warm up and the dancers will stay on and do extra uh, warm up and then do their daily rotation for the day. And the rotations is just going through each number. Okay, this number, first number, this is doing it for the first show. This is, and it will always depend on who the leads are for that particular show. We have three different sets of couples of leads. So depending on who's doing lead, it'll depend who's where. And so we that we that, that time of the day is a good time to drill anything from the day previous that maybe wasn't working. And um, once we get into, into the show routine, literally your time in between shows is is personal time hmm. uh, to relax or go out to the theme park or you know at the end of the day you're working in a theme park. <laughs> Uh, and there's lots of fun things to do. And the one thing I will say about working in Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, there is a huge entertainment department. There are some incredible performers, other shows in Germany, in the in um, in England, uh, Italy, and some of these. Even personally, when I was there, whatever, 15, 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> I can't remember how long ago. But some of my friends I've met are friends for life, and I met them there. Uh, some of them got on to be Broadway stars, win Tony Awards. So it's a great opportunity to meet people in the, in the music theater world. Hmm. Okay. And so how many spots are you looking to fill this time? Okay, so what we, this year, we are, so what we do is we sponsor a certain amount of visa candidates. Okay. And then are either our US or US citizen based um, candidates. So this year we are casting six visa candidates. Okay. And we're casting six to eight uh, US candidates. Okay. Okay. 14 total and as i said that process is kind of ongoing as of now we have uh our visa application uh just closed last week because we need to start the process for visas because it takes a bit longer and now our us uh is open still um and we often during the year will always get people who will send in uh, information. But one thing I would like to point out to people that the way we look at it each year as when we are um, hiring people, we look at each year as a new year. So even if you'd sent in your materials two years ago, we wouldn't actively have them ongoing. So I just would like people to know that that if you're auditioning for a new another season and you're like, oh, I auditioned two years ago, I didn't hear anything, please re-audition okay. each season okay because just you know as time goes on people's auditions can change too and sure. different circumstances change yeah okay so i guess marcus in conclusion if people are interested in in learning more about it or auditioning what's uh, the best place they can find contact information or just more information in general we have an audition page um which i can share um it's uh seaworldauditions.com and if you kind of just search for irish dancers you'll find the information 
basically their email address is bgwauditions at seaworld.com and that's where you would send in your video reel and what we ask for is uh two steps in the jig or hornpipe um slip jig uh 32 bars again for the females and then a short a cappella piece or treble reel um, and if you have any professional Irish dance show performance clips to send that into. And we just would the one thing we would ask is that maybe the footage could be as recent as possible, prefer, preferably in the last six months. So that with a resume into BGW auditions at SeaWorld.com. And the website again is SeaWorldAuditions.com. And then you can just search Bush Gardens of Williamsburg and you'll see the link to the Irish dancers. Okay. And I'll make sure and include the direct link to that in the, uh, the show notes of this podcast. Yes. I will send that on to you too. Awesome. Well, Marcus, thanks for coming on and, and sharing your experiences with Bush Gardens and, uh, and what people need to, to look forward to if they want to apply themselves. And Hey, maybe you, you, I hope you have 15 more years of success out there. It sounds like a great show. Well, it's been wonderful and it's, it's great working with so many talented performers and dancers from all over the world. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to come on tonight.